Hey guys, here at osmvtxtreats.com. Today we're taking a video first look at the iPro E71 series smartphone. Well, if this isn't a clone of the Nokia E71, I will bite my tongue off because it looks almost identical to Nokia's more premium and higher, higher, higher priced handset. However, iPro, one of those uh, Chinese manufacturers that seems to just love to copy Nokia phones, put two SIM cards on it, and then call it a day, um, has actually come up with a device that isn't as, at as atrocious as some other clones we've seen in the past. This is mainly uh, caused by the fact that the phone is actually crafted out of materials that rival that of the original handset, thanks to its use of uh, metal and actually stainless steel materials and glass, which are actually fairly premium, actually, to the touch, which, again, was pretty surprising to us when we first pick this phone up, considering its low price. Taking a look at the design, it shouldn't be too much of a surprise to say that it's uh, pretty much identical to the real one. There are a few notable tweaks though. For example, on the top, obviously we have some logos that aren't on the real phone. For example, TV. Well, the no real Nokia E71 on Symbian doesn't have TV service. This one does. We'll see in a second. It's kind of like the LG View that it has an antenna. We have an iPro logo on the top of a earpiece. And also by here, this is what looks like an ambient light sensor. It's actually a front-facing VGA quality camera. This is actually pretty impressive considering the real Nokia phone didn't have a front camera, it only had a rear camera, and this has both. Below that we have the screen, which is slightly smaller than the real Nokia handset, um, still quite workable though, um, we'll see that in, in a few minutes. On the below that we have access to a navigation d-pad that's basically like this, the real thing, but instead of having only one call button, we have two because it has two SIM cards. As a result, we can select to be calling people from our SIM card 1 or SIM card 2. Um, as a result, the menu navigation here is very crowded and hard to get to because it tries to do a lot of things like going to the menu, going to FM radio, going to the main menu, using the D-pad and hotkeys and calling people with different SIM cards. And as a result, you have to really use your fingernails to dig into these buttons. Um, they are tactile and easy to press, but they're just super small. And especially if you have large fingers, they're going to be a problem. The D-pad is quite easy and spacious though. And so navigating around using this shouldn't be a real problem. And uh, overall, that spatial navigation experience. Below that, you find access to the QWERTY keyboard, which again simulates a Nokia keyboard by providing uh, four rows of uh, QWERTY layout. It's a very elongated keyboard because this is a portrait-style QWERTY handset. It isn't a, ver uh, a horizontal keyboard. Um, overall, buttons feel good. They are bubbly and they are texture-filled. However, it feels a little hollow. So when I'm typing on it really fast and with a lot of effort, I'm almost fearful that it's going to crumble inwards like paper and the button will actually go through the phone. I get that feeling a little bit with this, with this handset for some reason, um, even though on paper it shouldn't because it's actually made out of metal. Um, overall, typing on the QWERTY keyboard is a pretty good experience. I can feel my way around thanks to the fact that the buttons are all risen above the surface to a nice degree, and the buttons are all uh, widely spaced, so you shouldn't have too much issues with typing out messages at a good space. It just feels a little bit more cheap than on the real thing. Below this, we have access to a microphone slot, again, made out of metal on the bottom here. Uh, on the very bottom of this device, we have access to a small... Uh, headphone jack that actually is a 2.5 millimeter headphone jack. You need an adapter to change it to a 3.5 to listen to music, which is unfortunate. And on the front here, we have a charger slot and also our USB slot, which allows us to connect this thing to our computer uh, in order to access more information like applications and the such. And this USB slot is actually hidden underneath this little cover, which you need to pry open. It actually just uses a micro USB, standard micro USB, which is good. Granted, uh, I think iPro did a great job of making this device super slim, considering its numerous amounts of features that are actually built in and the dual SIM card capabilities. This thing is actually as slim as, as the original one, and that's quite an, an accomplishment. If we compare that to something like Nokia Fold, it really comes across as how thin this thing is. It's paper thin, um, easily as, as small as any modern day smartphone that we see in the market. Below this, we have one speaker on the left, and on the right, we have another speaker, which actually means this phone is a dual speaker and a, a stereo speaker-enabled device, so when you're placing on a desk and playing music or calling people using the speakerphone, it provides a better experience than typical devices that we've seen. On the right-hand side of the product, we have access to a, a very interesting little nub that looks like a stylus slot. It's actually a antenna for the TV capability. Just like on the LG View on AT&T here, it actually has an extendable antenna. When you flip the phone over, it actually plays back TV by providing, you know, 
digital signals over the channel. You do need a subscription fee though, and it does cost you monthly fees, especially over a carrier fee, because um, it doesn't use Wi-Fi to do this service. But um, it's a nice feature to have, especially in some countries, especially in Asia. Um, one one feature that I didn't like is how small this thing is, so it's very hard to actually pry open unless you have very long nails, and it's quite an issue for uh, a lot of people to get open. We have a vo volume rocker in here, also a hotkey to launch different applications they can select from and of course the second speaker. On the bottom back, we have access to the camera. Now, it says on here, I don't know if you can read it, there we go, 9.0 megapixel camera. And this is a total piece of BS because um, it isn't a 9.0 megapixel camera. It's basically just a two megapixel camera, I think. And it performs as well as a two megapixel camera. It's fixed focus. There is an LED flash that works quite well in a and a, a self-portrait mirror, but unfortunately, it's not an 8, 9 megapixel camera, and it's never going to be even close to that, because even the real phone doesn't have 9 megapixels. Anyways, below this, we have the battery cover, which is actually made out of stainless steel, act like the real thing, and once the thing is off, it feels extremely heavy, and again, it's metallic, it feels very good in the hand, and makes this feel, feel a lot more solid. We also have a QWERTY keyboard logo. Behind the back cover, you'll find information that uh, includes the dual SIM cards, which are actually stacked on top of one another, uh, a little bit hard to get in there, so I would just recommend you to put your two SIM cards in there and not move it around a lot. For example, put in a T-Mobile and, and AT&T SIM card at once instead of swapping them out every single few days. You also have a micro SD card slot that can expand the memory on here up to 32 gigabytes, especially if you want to put music files and watch movies with this thing. That's going to be very uh, key and essential. And also down below here is the battery, which is actually very akin to that of the real battery in that, like Nokia phones, these have uh, very stuck and solid gold contact points points, and the actual battery itself has indents in it where you put the battery in, and then it, it comes into contact with these pins, and then there you go, you have your battery inside. Overall, the Nokia, the iPro E71 Pro smartphone is uh, something that's on paper, at least in terms of hardware, looks extremely similar to Nokia E71, and even in terms of feel and uh, crafts and finish, it actually comes pretty close. There, of course, it isn't as good, and we don't expect it to ever be as good, and there are some blatant lies that makes this device feel even more ridiculous than it should, um, but on paper, it actually is pretty interesting. We're going to test this thing out in the labs. It doesn't run on Symbian. It runs on a Java version, which is pretty bad, pretty slow, and doesn't function very well. But we'll tell you our, our final thoughts by posting a real video review out on osmvtxreviews.com in, in the coming days, and also post an article on our website. So if you're interested in this handset, be sure to read our full review that will be out in a few weeks. So thanks for watching. This has been a first look at the um, iPro E71 Pro handset with dual SIM card capabilities.